so a lot has gone down with Judah. So let's take a recap of what happened. All right, so Judas, for the most part, was working very well, and then we'll cover the ball by ball as to what exactly happened. Um, it all started last week. I think in the last video, you saw that I put Judas up, and Judas was around street driving. I was attempting to do some tweaks to get it ready for the upcoming drag event, and for the most part, everything seemed to be, seemed to be going fine. It was getting a little bit squirrely, and I don't advocate doing any sort of testing on any public road. So I took it to the track in the afternoon, and my intention was to just walk on the 60 foot and the short track, and the second half of the track doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you get your launches and everything right. If the car has enough power, it'll do what it'll have to do in the second half of the track. Um, the event was supposed to be a no prep event. So no track bite, no compound or anything of that sort. And the, for the most part, the car was going fine. Um, Alistair was also there with me. We were working out with his car since he's fairly, fairly fresh to drag racing if he's K24 swap on the fit. So he was doing a couple of runs as well. Alistair is about to take a draggy run. As you can see, he did have some gearbox issues that was preventing him from getting good 60 foot, um, good 60 foot times, but for the most part, the car was working good. Um, when it came down to Judas, Judas, for the better part of the day, ran a uh, 14.8, I believe, 14.6, sorry, at 96 miles an hour. That was on wastegate pressure, which is right around 10 or so PSI of boost. So the car was tuned um, previously a couple of months ago, I believe June of this year on the dyno and the car made 305 wheel horsepower. But when we took the car down again, Judas is fairly new, fairly new build to me anyways. I haven't really gone over every single part of the car, but I did the engine, the harness and whatnot. The exhaust on the car is very restrictive, but even through that, the exhaust turned out to be a two and a quarter inch exhaust when I inspected it after that. And the muffler sucks. The muffler is actually... I, I like the muffler since it's very quiet, but it's actually a stock muffler from a Toyota Altezza, which is a car which comes out of the factory. Um, it's JDM exclusive, but it comes out of the factory for around 200 horsepower. And I was pushing on the dyno around 300 or so, give or take, wheel, with 19 pounds of boost through my 50 trim T3 T4 turbo. Right, so this end power, but I always felt it had some more in it. So fast forward to last week, we did day one on the track and then I cut short. And then a couple of days later, I returned. Um, the plan was to take off the exhaust on the car and put the, the car on an open down pipe since I would not run it through the restrictive exhaust. And just because I had a feeling it was killing top end. Well, I felt it was killing top end when I was going on the track with the exhaust. So first run of the day, on street tires, nothing else changed. The car went from a 14.6 at 95 miles an hour to something like a 14.2 at 91. And I believe I let off a bit early. So immediately the car gained half a second. <laughs> At that power level, that would equate to roughly around 15 to 20, 22 or so horsepower. So the wheel is gained by just disconnecting the exhaust at half a pound, at 9 to 10 pounds of boost. Right, so next thing up, I think I did a couple more runs on on the street tires just to get it um, comfortable to a point where if I did not end up running the slicks, that's what I would run. And the best 60 foot I got was like a two. 
2.27 all right the next thing i did was the 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 slicks i threw on a set of 24.5 slicks um 15 slicks and for the most part the car was all over the place um i did when it it did get catch a slightly better 60 foot um i think i got like a 217 60 foot because having a couple of problems getting the gears but i did get a better 60 foot but the second half of the track the car was just squally so <laughs> So, a couple of runs in, and uh, so far we have the slicks working, but um, for the long and short, Judas is not cooperating. Back end seems to be stepping out on the power. Getting a little bit schooly. So, I think for now, we need a little bit more suspension work to get the back to stay stable. And we have a lot of suspension work to do, but the slick seems to be. Giving us the best 60 foot, I think right now we have it down to like a 2.1. Should be a lot better on the slicks. Um, we have about 9 PSI in the slicks. Can probably go down with pressure. But for now, I think it's looking like we're going to end up running on the street tires. Because it does not like the slicks. And made the choice that I was going to pull it back on the street tires and run the even on the street tires. And that would have been that. Probably try some more boosts. Um, but just before I left, I said I would do one more pass. What's that? I don't think I'm going to pull water for blue. Pull the engine? Yeah, pull the Okay. <laughs> so, Melon wants to pull the engine out because if you see the back of it, we loaded with that black thingy they call oil. So, I did another pass, one last pass for the road. <laughs> that was actually what I said, one before I go home. And it looks like cylinder number two let go. I am not sure right now. And the sad thing is that I was not logging. So I have no idea what happened. Uh, but uh, we lost cylinder number two. We definitely lost it. We cleaned it up. The, um, the plug had some aluminum on it. And so might be detonation might be an injector i'm not sure still has the same tune from what he left the dyno with today's a bit hotter but again lots of variables but i'm not sure so looks like we are not going to be making this event bittersweet but i mean that's racing for you so we're gonna have a drink in the meantime while we wait for we we'll wait for Meldon's the vehicle. L300 that just saves you every time. The what? The trusted L2 and L300 that just saves you every time. Yeah, so the trusted bus which always pulls this when it goes. But in the end, I'm not sure. I cannot blame Judas, but something definitely went wrong on that pass. Um, I'm not sure. And I don't have any data. So we'll see. And as you can see, after all of those clips, um, Something went catastrophically, cat, catastrophically wrong with Judas. So at the time, I knew I lost cylinder two. Um, cylinder two, the engine bay was covered in oil and whatnot. So cylinder two was definitely gone. So um, took the car home. I ended up towing it home. Meldon again always comes to the rescue. Thank you, Meldon. And and the next day, I took it apart. So let me show you what, guys what I found. Alright, so the next day I took the head off and like I suspected, cylinder 2, blue, right? But if we look here, cylinder 1, cylinder 3 and cylinder 4 are perfect. So look at cylinder 2 here, we can see that there's some torching to the side of the piston. So right here, torching and then we have a little... This one doesn't look like touching. This one just looks like something got wedged there and a little bit of touching, if I would say so. And the pigs here is just 
I found little pieces of aluminum broken off the piston and that was bouncing around so it did give it a couple scars in there but one three and four are perfect all right so with that in mind i i took some time to analyze what happened um on that last run when it actually blew i did try turning up the boost a little bit um was trying some strategies for traction management uh unfortunately i was not logging so i cannot tell you how much boost the car went up to or not um but the car does have some protections on it for afr and whatnot so even if it went lean the car would protect itself but for the most part something went wrong um looking at judging by the pistons if something went wrong across the board and that's just I mean, hopefully this sort of, sort of diagnosis will help someone with trying to figure out what went wrong with their engine when they get a failure like this. Um, engines would typically break from a few things. Um, one, you can break a part by overpowering a part. So cylinder pressure and whatnot, you can break parts. It will usually just be a clean break or something like that. If it's detonating, then that means you're having some weird ignition events in your engine when they shouldn't be happening and then the first telltale sign is little pitting marks on every single cylinder typically on a rear wheel drive car like this inline engine the rear cylinders usually run hottest so these usually are the first to detonate most times anyways and then you'll see pitting on top of the piston in this case i saw nothing like that on any one of my cylinders and if it was detonating it would be detonating across the board so one, two, three, and four, mostly. But usually the rest cylinder would be detonating first, which would be number four in my case. That was not the case. Um, the other thing that can break an engine is the engine runs lean. And with lean, there's a lot of temperature in the engine, and that's where you start melting parts, um, like in cylinder two. But the thing about it, just like detonation, is that it would be happening on every single cylinder. So cylinder one, two, and four, one, two, three, four, or if you have a six cylinder, every single one. But in some cylinders would run a bit leaner than others. Depends on your intake manifold design and whatnot. But one would inevitably go or two go and the rest would just be badly damaged. In my case, every single cylinder was good with the exception of cylinder two. But there was heat damage. So what does that mean? What can we tell from the data? Um, I don't have a log, so I have nothing. I don't have EGTs. But the fact that the damage was isolated to cylinder two would tell me that it's more than likely an injector failure. Um, if it were a lean condition, like I said, every single cylinder would have some sort of damage, but it's just number two. And number two went bad. Um, the telltales, and I think I had a clip where just before I did that last pass, I turned up the boost. We were experimenting with the slicks, so we felt the slicks were a bit dead and i did a long burnout and whatnot and then we got it to hook that's when i got the two the two 160 foot but after that <coughs> sorry after that the the car would not be able to launch and we just felt like the slicks were working better because they're like 10 year old slicks we thought that maybe they were just working better at the time but it may have just been at that point the car was already wounded from just doing all of these runs were nine psi and the car was tuned very rich on the dyno the intention was that the car is going to get beat on on the track. So I usually don't push very... I mean, we can debate AFRs all day long, but I mean, I usually try to keep it a little bit on the safe side with timing and fuel, especially if a car you intend to beat on the road because we want it to last. But in this case, it wasn't a gradual fa fa failure from what I saw. It was somewhere between that second to last pass and that last pass. Um, injector failed. Um, took out cylinder one. Um, for the most part, the block does have a little bit of scarring on it, um, but nothing that a little honing won't fix. So for the most part now, it's down to replace the, pull the pistons out, and check the rods as well, check the bearings, and throw a new piston in there. They were cast in a pistons, they were not forged pistons. So when if it's like a piston you would get in a SR20DE that you have, any one of you guys can get that from eBay or if you bought it. You got your engine with it um so we're probably gonna throw another piston in there and i'm gonna redo the fuel system we don't have any means of flow testing side fed injectors down here so i am not sure i can probably try probably powering it and spraying some fluid for it to see if it just to satisfy myself that it's not completely blocked off or the coil in the injector died or something 
But for the most part, I'm suspecting injectors and I don't feel comfortable even cleaning those injectors after I lost the motor. So I am probably just going to step up. I did have intentions of stepping up to some top fed injectors in the new year, but now I'm just going to have to do it sooner than I expected. And I'm probably going to do, I'm looking for something in the region of maybe a thousand to 1500 CC injectors, since I have plans to play with some other fuels as well, which I will need the bigger injectors for. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm going to close it up right here. I did have clips for all of this. So I'm going to throw it in. I'm going to try to edit my bit, try my best to edit it. So you guys get a full picture. It was a bit hectic. So I could not really film everything to make a very, very organized vlog. So hopefully this one is not too long and it explained to you guys what exactly happened at first. But either way, it does not really matter how or when it blew the point is that it blew but the data is always good because you start questioning things did i do this should i have done that and then there's no rewind button with an engine if it's gone it's gone so everything is a learning process um if it were my mistake if it was something i did wrong maybe i just gave it a little bit too much sauce chalk that down as a learning process i'm even when i retire from this whole tuning thing i will still not have learned everything that i need to learn so um, some people are afraid to admit that no no one wants to sound like they made a mistake or they made a new mistake but we all do it all the time some people admit it some don't i always admit it to myself and my customers so this is me being honest with you guys as to what happened um this one doesn't look like it was my fault i think um but injector 2 looked like it failed and of course it wasn't exactly judah's fault or was it Till next time, guys. See you guys around.